Hi, Martin Bradfield here from Top Down Drumming with our 16th installment in the Molder Method lesson series. This is video number 16. We've examined all the various Molder ideas at great length. We talked about applying them to music. We talked about different note flows, different arm flows. I played at different tempos. We interpreted syncopation using Molder. We did a lot of things at great length. I thought in this one video here, we try to sum up everything within a 15 minute framework. So if you know a little bit about Molder to begin with, this might be a good place to go to. The other 15 videos you can access at your leisure and uh, absorb them and have fun with them and hang out with me during those lessons. But for now, I want to present as much information as I can within, say, a 15 minute time frame here. Molder method in a nutshell. The basic philosophy of Molder is that it's a rebounding technique. The stick should rebound off the drum. That's a natural physical move. The stick moves as an axiom of physics. The stick will stay in motion. So allow the stick to bounce. The other idea, uh, important philosophy of Moeller is that it's uh, use all of your arm components, your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, your fingers. There's a certain whipping quality to it. The wrist will limp. The stick will hit the drum and the stick will rebound. Part of the charm of Moeller and the goal is to accept the rebound and then manipulate all that power kind of naturally. The advantages of Moeller, it's a little easier way to go. It uses elliptical motion rather than right angle motion. So I feel it's a little easier on the body. The stick grip is pretty neutral. The stick is just doing its thing in your hand. There's no real tension, no real squeezing. It's a natural, I think a natural approach. It also gives you a rounded sound. Your sound is your message. If you're playing in a tight way and gripping the sticks tightly, you're going to convey a tight message. Molder is a rounder sort of thing. Now Molder is not the end. Molder is just a possibility. There are lots of different techniques and you might use all of these tools whenever you need them. Molder gives you a rounded elliptical sound. It's accent driven, rebound driven. I think it's also melodically driven because the accents imply a certain melody over top of the filigree of the quieter notes. Therefore, it's used a lot by a lot of the great jazz drummers especially. Okay, that's the basic philosophy of Moeller. And by the way, Moeller was born like in 1875 and he observed these things and talked to a lot of Civil War veteran drummers to get these insights. He did not invent the system, he just codified it. It uh, apparently currently is very popular and there are a lot of Moeller method-ish things going on. But they all stress those things I talked about. Four basic motions in Moeller. There's the full stroke where you hit the drum and accept the rebound all the way back up. You don't stop and pull it up, you just follow it up. Stick grip loose in your hand. No real tension anywhere. You have to allow the stick to do its thing. Match grip, traditional grip, doesn't matter. You accept the bounce. That's a full stroke. Downstroke. Accept the bounce only to a point, to about four inches off the drum. To do this, you basically just soften your hand on impact and the stick stops. You don't squeeze or anything. Downstroke, 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 downstroke. Notice the elliptical motion. The elbow, like a whipping motion. Same motion here. The elbow starts up and then the stick happens. Notice the elbow starts up first. I think it's a graceful looking motion too. Okay, full stroke, down stroke. The tap is when you're already down there and it's just basically a releasing of the stick. You could release with your back fingers or use your wrists. That's for the ghost notes and just the quieter elements of your playing. Just releasing the stick from an already low position. So it starts low and goes lower. There's no real magic to that stroke. You're just releasing the stick. You could think about the back fingers relaxing and the stick just falling. In the left hand traditional grip, 
the fingers kind of get out of the way. A lot of molar is getting out of the way, letting things happen naturally. The last basic motion is the upstroke. Usually the upstroke is combined with other movements because the upstroke is always en route to something else. So just doing it by itself is a little awkward. It starts low and ends up high. So from the low position, the wrist kind of limps as the elbow goes out and the stick hits kind of on the way up. Collapse the wrist. You're not hitting it and then going up. You're just getting out of your way. I studied this with Jim Chapin. I think he described it as a, uh, like a marionette. You know, you have like a string on your wrist pulling it up. And this is really the magic of molar is the upstroke. Because you're on your way up and you're also hitting the drum. Upstroke. Up. If you're not used to this, you'll probably feel it in your shoulders here. Upstroke. Remember, things kind of collapse. Collapse on the way up. Collapse. Up. Up. Okay, that's the basic motions. Let's start to combine them. The basic move, a two-part move, and a lot of molar could be considered as numbers. There's two-part moves, three-part moves, four-part moves. Not to imply any kind of arithmetics to this idea, but that's the feeling that your body will get feelings of twos and threes that you can apply musically. The most basic two-part move would be a downstroke and then an upstroke. Down, up, down, up. Down, stays down, up, releases, down, up. Notice the kind of whipping idea. Down, up. Your arm goes up and down once, but you get two notes out of it. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, then you relax on the way up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Notice there's no false upward action. By that I mean a lot of, a lot of guys, a lot of students will go down, then they kind of automatically come up again before they hit. Down. Just let the stick fall. Up, down. Up. Like you're not going down. Up. It's down. Up. <coughs> down. Up. Okay? That's down up. Very crucial move. At faster speeds, there's what, what I call molar within molar. Where you're basically doing a down up, but you're not doing all that activity and all that, you're not covering all that distance with your arms. You're using your fingers in the back to release the stick. Kind of a piston-like. The fingers, um, that you can see from this angle. The fingers get out of the way, kind of release. I've heard it called a push-pull, I think, in some other systems. In the left hand, the bottom fingers, The first finger kind of rides on the stick, kind of going like this kind of thing. That's molar within molar. The second motion is a motion of three parts, down, tap, and up. And this is one of the most crucial molar moves. Molar seems to work best over like a three-ish kind of triplety feel. Not surprising because it's usually in a hand-to-hand -hand sort of style. Down, tap, up. Down, tap, up. Down, tap. Notice the stick is falling in stages. Down is that high. Tap is that high. And up is actually lower, but you're going up as you play. Down, tap. Notice the move. 
the basic move is the sa same as the down up. Down, down, up, down, up, down, tap, up, tap. Down, release, tap, up, down, tap, up, down. Down, tap, up. Stick falls in stages. Down, tap, up, down. Down. Notice there's only one big arm motion though. For molar within molar here, your fingers will kind of open up. Like um, open up. Then close. And this hand is like a kind of a throwing motion for molar within molar. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that's molar within molar. The four part move down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap. Notice the stick falls lower each time. Down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap. Down, tap, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up, down, tap. Okay, so the basic moves with one hand. Down, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, tap, up. Within each one of these is also what I call molar within molar. Okay, let's apply these hand to hand now. I like what I call insertions. You might have one hand doing a down, up. The other hand throws itself in there. Down ups. Down ups. Down ups. Down ups. That gives you a flowing of four. A shorter flow would be a flow of two. On this because you're accenting so early and quickly, the lead hand is playing a full stroke. Full stroke, tap. Full stroke and a tap. Full tap, full tap. That's your flow of four. Right hand alone going down up. Down tap up with the lead hand. Shoving the left hand in. That's your flow of six. Down, tap, tap up, inserting the left hand at your flow of eight. That's some basic hand-to-hand -hand flows with one hand leading the way. This is excellent for, you can combine some of these numbers, threes and twos. To, that's down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, up, down, up. That's the same thing faster. Threes, threes, twos, threes, threes, twos. Hopefully that'll really whet your appetite because a lot of odd meters are considered bunches of twos and threes. So right there at your disposal is the numeric feeling of that motion in your hands of twos and threes with your other hand filling in around it. A lot of possibilities. Any kind of accent. 
That's a common accent. That's three, 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 two, two, three, 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 two, two, three, 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 two, two, three. Okay, let's take you one hand, the, the down up, down tap ups, and starting the left hand. The next section, number five, you see a yin yang symbol. These have accents between the hands. The most important stroke, I believe, is the triplet or a flow of three. One, two, three, one, two, three. I call it yin yang because in molar terminology, each hand has a down stroke, each hand has an up stroke, each hand has a tap. Down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap. From where you're sitting, the six should be falling in stages. Compare that to this. That's obviously one hand after another in a one for one ratio. One wrist stroke, one hit. Compare that to, very important stroke. It looks very different. From where you're sitting, it's actually kind of hard to tell that this is hand to hand because each hand is kind of falling lower and lower each time. Compare that once again to this. It's also more relaxed feeling. Down, up, tap, down, up, tap. That's the yin yang stroke. Another great one is to play fives between each hand because then you can use all the molar motions in one little exercise. If I play one, two, three, four, five, accenting the one and the three, one, two, three, four, five, one. You have a full stroke and a down. Full, down, full, down. Sometimes they call it a bounce stroke. Bounce, down, bounce. Because it's just bouncing back to where it started. Full stroke down tap, full stroke down tap, full stroke down. Molar can also be used for sticking patterns. I consider the yin yang stroke as our basic flow. Okay, here's a paradiddle. It looks the same. You're just relaxing longer on the taps. Down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap. Down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up. Down. Notice my arms look the same. So here the paradiddles look the same and are no harder to do than the triplets. I didn't write these up here, but you can you can add more strokes to that as paradiddles. That's five notes per side. Triplets, paradiddles, five notes. Eight notes per side. That it all comes from this. So the, the basic move can become a lot of things. play doubles like that is actually pretty easy. The accent gives you it. Okay, so that's the molar method in a very quick nutshell. I didn't look at the timing, but I was hoping to get that in under 15 minutes. I think I did that. So that might be a good page to come back to once in a while to refresh your whole molar method idea. Remember, it's about rebound, 
looseness, accent driven, melody driven, and lack of tension. That's our goal for Moeller and hopefully in your musical approach. Okay, thank you very much. Martin Bradfield here, Top Down Drumming. See you next time. <laughs>